Hello there, this is Daniele from Toolchefs and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a state machine with Atoms Crowd. For this video I'm going to use Maya, uh, but the same workflow applies to all softwares that have uh, the Atoms UI. So to open the Atoms UI you have to go under the Atoms Crowd shelf and press this uh, button here, or you, alternatively you can go under Atoms and then Atoms UI. This message dialog will pop up asking you if you want to initialize your scene and I'm going to click yes. Uh, when you initialize your scene, uh, actually what you're doing is to uh, create a, a, a node, which is the TC Atomos node. And if we go in the extra attribute section, uh, we'll find this JSON data string attribute. And this uh, attribute here is actually the data that uh, stores uh, all the clips, uh, agent types, uh, state machines, and so on. And the Atomos UI just presents it nicely to the user. Um, okay, so uh, we're gonna go in under the state machine tab here and uh, uh, we're just first gonna have a look at uh, a state machine, uh, the state machine that is uh, uh, shipped by default with, uh, with atoms for the man. Uh, the state machine can be assigned under the agent type uh, uh, events tab to as an agent type, as you can see here. Uh, if you click on this button, you'll see a list of all the available state machines and you can pick one and that will be assigned to the to the agent type. Um, okay, so going back to the state machines tab, uh, you can see here we have some like a quick help showing you the things that you can do in the shortcuts. So you can, for instance, uh, uh, copy paste states uh, with control C, control V. You can also, of course, uh, um, select multiple states and they will be copied. Uh, alternatively, you can also uh, select the states and transitions and if the states that you are copying are connected and you're also um, selected the transitions, that those transitions will be copied as well. Uh, of course, you can uh, copy paste uh, states uh, between one state machine uh, to another state machine. Um, okay, so um, basically a state machine is a graph that defines how uh, an agent can go from a state to another. So a state can be an idle state each state can contain multiple clips. So for instance, uh, you can have like uh, different idle clips here. And then we have like a work state uh, where you can have different works, uh, work cycles here. And then you can connect the, the two states um, like uh, with, uh, with these. Uh, so let's actually create a couple of states so I can show you. You can create uh, connect two states by just uh, uh, right clicking on a state and then drag and dropping on uh, the uh, other state. Uh, when uh, they are first connected, you will see that basically there is this um, uh, simple uh, arrow, while here we have also a circle. This is because these transitions here, they have uh, um, a transition clip applied, while this one doesn't have a transition clip. Uh, so as soon as you set basically a clip here, so let's see, like that, you see that basically now we have that circle. Uh, the uh, the thing is when you don't have a transition clip, uh, atoms will uh, will actually blend linearly between the two clips, um, and you can provide some uh, blend um, for the transition blend frames from the transition uh, on the transition itself. So let's go back to so for instance, let's select one of the states that uh, have already been set up. Um, so you see here we have a name, which is the name that you see here. We have an ID, uh, so this one has a zero, a one, two, and three. The ID of each state in a state machine must be unique. So we see that here at the moment we have the maximum ID is three, and they can actually, if you create a new one, you see that now basically we have a, a, um, a new ID which is a four. So basically atoms assign a unique ID straight away to your uh, new state. So then we have the max turn angle and the uh, random loop. So the max turn angle is uh, basically a field where actually you can input some uh, limits for your um, uh, angle variation uh, at each frame for your, uh, for your um, agents and clips. Then we have the random loop. So basically when you add clips to a state, like in this case we have this one, you can set a merge type. So the merge type can be merge exclusive random. So exclusive is the highest priority. So whenever a clip is exclusive, it means that when an agent is in that state, that clip will be executed on and only that clip. If you have merge, uh, which is the second priority with uh, between all of these um, uh, merge types, all the clips that are in merge mode will actually be merged together. 
and instead if you have uh, if you have set them all to random atoms will pick one randomly and play it uh, and play th the clip that has been picked randomly for that for the, for that agent um so when you set a random loop if you have for instance let's say five clips the first time that an agent enters this state atoms will pick randomly one one of these clips and assign them to um to your agent then when that clip finishes playing atoms will pick another clip and not play just always the same one and assign that clip to to your agent so if you actually uncheck these whenever you enter that state the a clip will be picked randomly just once and not like uh, continuously okay so that's that the velocity uh, we are gonna sh um, have a look at this in another video uh, the for the velocity to state module then for adding clips you can uh, as you saw already click on this button or you can even alternatively open this uh, uh, little ui uh, select multiple uh, um, clips and drag and drop them in the in the list here uh, then you can of course select all of them if you want and start playing with uh, um, the uh, attributes here so for instance if you want to set them all to random you can do like that you see they are now to random and then you can register the clip uh, at the moment I don't really want to apply these changes so I'm just gonna click revert and this is gonna take me back to the initial state of the, um, uh, the state machine okay so basically this is what the um, the inspector for animation state is we have the same thing for uh, the uh, transition, although we can see that there are um, a few differences. So we have still the max turn angle. Uh, also, sorry, um, you have always to um, assign a name to your transitions and uh, states and make sure that they are uh, unique. You don't actually use these inside uh, your, uh, um, inside your state machine module. You just use the ID. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's important to give them a name so that also when you debug things uh, they, are, they are actually see meaningful names um, so basically yeah, we have max turn angle we have blending frames and blend out frames for the when the clip start transitioning uh, uh, from a state to the other state and then we have again the, um, basically you can add as, as we said transition clips uh, and then at this point we are going to have also a look at the viewport here so the viewport here shows you the uh, clip for the selected state you have to first make sure that your compatible agent type is, is selected so in this case I'm gonna select man and you can see here the state uh, in the state you're, if you you know scrub or play you're gonna see the clip playing um, if we select the transition instead this is a, actually a good way for testing transitions so if I press play you see up here uh, is telling you this is basically the clip name is telling you the frame where we're at uh, on the clip and then there is the basically the there are a few frames where actually the there's the blending between the uh, the idle clip and the transition clip like uh, here here you see where actually the two clips are being merged together and then uh, the transition clip plays that and then the work clip uh, kicks in and uh, starts playing so basically uh, this is how you can actually see how your transition are playing if the uh, if you know the blending is smooth enough uh, you can adjust uh, the settings here and so on so this is a pretty useful uh, um, thing to have um, if uh, let's actually uh, just a second uh, I'm gonna show you quickly actually let's create a new state machine uh, so you can create a new state machine by pressing the add button or right clicking and then clicking new I'm gonna call it state machine if you want to re uh, rename your uh, state machine uh, after you have created it you can just uh, uh, double click on it in the list and give it uh, a different name like that then for adding state you can uh, uh, right click here or you know use the button here so I'm gonna create a couple, uh, so I'm gonna call it idle. This one work. I'm gonna connect them together, right clicking uh, from uh, the first uh, state to the other. Uh, uh, if you want to remove this, the connection, you just press control and then click on the transition and then drag away. Um, so for the idle, I'm gonna add uh, the idle clip and the work I'm gonna add uh, the walk clip like that 
and uh, uh, just for now let's have a look at the transition uh, let's call it idle to work gonna give uh, three frames uh, for the blending frames and three frames for the blend out so if I press play it will see that basically the, the, the transition won't actually be that smooth so you see it was actually very quick very sudden let's move back I mean, it's still pretty good, but you know, it's uh, is not is not as good as having the transition clip. So, if you add the transition clip here, uh, either to work, the transition is a bit better. Um, cool, okay, so once you have your state machine and you assign it to uh, your uh, agent type, so I save this state machine, I'm gonna go in the agent type tab, uh, I'm gonna select the, my new state machine, test state machine. So whenever now you're gonna create agents with this agent type, you're gonna use this state machine. So very quickly, let's create one. Uh, let's do uh, layout, create layout, state machine and let's do it skin state machine, so at the moment we're at state 0 I'm gonna press play, it's just uh, playing the idle clip so this uh, actually the state 0, let's go back to the UI just a second uh, that value here, this state value here, is the um, is the ID of the state, so of this state here. So if we change it to one, which is the ID for the work state, now the agent is playing uh, the work clip, and it's working. Uh, so basically, these these are the meanings of uh, the, so, uh, the the ID. Basically, is this is how you use it. Um, you can also use uh, a different way, so at the moment this uh, state machine module actually uh, when you change this uh, value actually just change it, the, changes the state metadata on the agent so you could even uh, you know create a metadata, add metadata uh, and then so I'm gonna select it, let's call it state uh, the state metadata is an integer so you see now, even though here we have one, uh, so in the state here, the add metadata actually, the, the int value for the state at the moment we're setting back to zero. And uh, you, you saw straight away where basically that the agent popped back to the idle clip. And if I disable this module, you see that uh, the agent is actually now back to the work because that's actually the ID from the, from the state machine. But if I activate again the add metadata, you see that uh, now it's back to the idle because this value here is zero. If I set it to one, you see that now it's working. So basically this, this is actually how you can also change the state. So it's not just a matter of uh, uh, changing this attribute here, but it's also, uh, you know, you can change the state in any way that you want. So you can uh, do a proximity metadata, use a proximity metadata. You can use other ways for changing the metadata with Python and so on. Uh, and this is actually how you can flexibly change the state uh, instead of just uh, uh, changing it manually or with a connection and so on. Uh, for the transitions, let's have a look at it quickly. Uh, I'm gonna set it back to zero. Uh, I'm gonna go to uh, frame 20. I'm gonna set another keyframe and then I'm gonna go to frame 21. I'm gonna set another keyframe and then I'm gonna press play. And now basically we should see the transition playing. And this is because, of course, you can change the state during the simulation, and because we uh, created that connection between idle and work, uh, we actually see the state changing. If, for instance, now, where basically we didn't have, we didn't create any connection between the work and idle, so the, the, the other way, basically, if uh, I go in here and I set a keyframe and I want to go back to to the idle state and I drag and move it here actually 
actually I need to give it let's give it a bit more keyframes a bit more time now I start walking but as you can see it's not going back to the idle state and this is because we're missing that connection so if you create one and I'm also gone going to uh, so it would be walk to idle gonna add a clip and I'm gonna set it to work to idle gonna register gonna click rewind so it's gonna start working and then now it's uh, going back to the idle state because we have that connection one other thing that is very useful is also the debug mode uh, the debug mode, uh, if you select an agent with the um, layout tool, so agent layout tool, which you can also activate with uh, the shelf button here. If you, if you have multiple agents, let's actually create uh, a couple more. Like this. If you select an agent with the debug uh, uh, on, so let's uh, go back here. You just see the debug information for the selected agent. But if you don't have any agent selected, it will just show it for uh, all the agents. So this is pretty useful because otherwise sometimes the, the information it is pretty packed and you can't actually see the information for the agent that you want to see. So that's how you can do it. Um, so if we press play, you actually see the information of the clip that is being played. And this is all for this video. Thanks for watching.